All right, everybody, we are just going to go a little bit more in depth on DNA replication and some of the stuff with DNA structure. So um, you are going to need to pretty much, these notes are pretty short, so you kind of want everything that you've got on the slide. Also, I am going to ask you to pause and take some snippets um, and put those into your notes. So make sure that you get those pictures. Um, we are doing DNA structure, replication, DNA is called the blueprint of a life. So we are going to be doing that. Um, and what you want is to write down the essential question first. So the essential question is, what is the structure of DNA and how does it replicate itself? So after this, and you should have an idea since we've done a little bit of front loading with that, what the structure of DNA looks like um, with your pogo that you did. Um, and how does it replicate itself? So we're going to go through that process together. So go ahead and make sure you have that essential question down. All right. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So you want to make sure that you write down the full name that will be on your exam. Um, deoxyribose is the sugar. So we'll go into what a nucleotide looks like. It has a couple of parts. Um, deoxyribose is a sugar, that's why it's called deoxyribo, and then it's a nucleic acid. So it's one of those four macromolecules that we talked about earlier in the year, um, but that we didn't do very much with. So now we're going to talk about that, okay? All right, so a little bit of facts about DNA. You would like to think that, you know, maybe we learned about it sooner, but um, we learned about DNA, and that was established by James Watson and Francis Crick. So they, you will hear some things about the Watson and Crick model that they came up with the idea of the shape of the double helix of DNA. So if you've seen this twisted ladder kind of picture when you're looking at DNA or different things, they came up with this idea that they figured out that the shape of the DNA was this double helix. So the double helix is a representative of this um, kind of format that you're looking at here, this structure. So go ahead and pause right now and take a snippet, or you can insert a picture. You can type in double helix, and you want to insert a picture of what the double helix looks like because you're going to have that on your exam, and you need to know that that twisted ladder structure is the double helix. Go ahead and pause and do that right now. Um, a couple of other facts about DNA. DNA codes for your genes, which are your traits. So your DNA codes for your eye color, hair color, height, bone density, those types of things, right? Codes for your traits, for your genes. And it's made up of repeating subunits called nucleotides. So earlier in the year when we talked monomers, we talked about the monomer, the building block of nucleic acids being a nucleotide. Those go together. Nucleotide, nucleic acid. Okay, so when we're looking at this double helix on the left here, Okay, we're looking at the double helix, and the nucleotides are these individual units in the middle. On your pogol, it said these are the rungs of the ladder. Okay, so the rungs of the ladder are the nucleotides. And we zoom in a little bit here. So if we zoom in on this double helix, that's what you get in the middle. Okay, and you can see each individual nucleotide is one of these on each side. Okay, so you've got nucleotide here, a nucleotide here, a nucleotide here. And on the other side, same thing, nucleotides here and here. And they're connected by these hydrogen bonds. And these hydrogen bonds in the middle, you can see they have these little dashed dotted lines. They are weak bonds. And you want these to be weak because in order to replicate, that DNA is going to have to unzip, okay? It's going to have to split these bonds. If these bonds are really strong, it would take a lot of energy to do that, and you don't want to do that. You want these to be weak, okay? Um, actually, right now would be a really good idea. Once you put in this bullet point of repeating subunits called nucleotides, I would take a snippet of this picture. You don't need this kind of twisty one on the right, but these two right here where you've got the double helix showing you that each of these are nucleotides and then the zoomed in part, that would be a good idea. All right, so what is a nucleotide? It has three parts, right? Earlier, we talked about nucleotides and some other things, um, or when we were talking about ATP, um, I was telling you guys that the phosphates are always represented by these circles, right? So you have your phosphate group here, deoxyribose, which is the sugar, okay? It's a five-ring sugar. And then your nitrogen base, which is going to be A, T, G, or C. And we saw some of those on the pogo also, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, all right? So this is a nucleotide, okay? And again, you have a phosphate group, a sugar, 
and a nitrogenous base. Those are the three parts. And you do need to know those three parts for your exam. So right now, go ahead and pause and take a snippet of the nucleotide with the different labels, all right? All right, once you have all of that kind of down, we also go into base pair rule, okay? And we saw this on our POGOL, so it's giving you these little puzzle pieces. Basically what happens is that the rungs of the ladder, we said those are the nitrogen bases, these puzzle pieces in the middle, and they're made up of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, right? We've got those four bases, A, T, G, and C, okay? And the base pair rule is that A's always pair with T's, and you can see that by the puzzle piece shapes here, okay? The T, or sorry, the adenine, the A, has this little, um, area where the thymine can fit into. So A's always pair with T's. So the way I remember it is that A's and T's have straight lines. So A's are all made of straight lines. T's are all made of straight lines. So A and T go together because they have straight lines. All right. G's and C's go together because they have curved lines, right? So you can see the curve on the G and the curve on the C. So A's and T's go together because they have straight lines, and G's and C's go together because they have curved lines. You might want to type that in, even though it's not on here on your notes, um, underneath. That would be my recommendation. Okay? And then the sides of the ladder, so this part here, if you think about this as a ladder, the sides of the ladder that you would hold with your hands as you climb up with your feet on these rungs in the middle, okay, are the phosphate and the sugar. So if we go back and look at this nucleotide, this is where you would put your feet, like the rungs of the ladder, and the sides of the ladder are made up of the phosphates and the sugars, okay? So these sides of the ladder here is phosphate and sugar, those blue portions, and then the nitrogenous bases are the rungs of the ladder, those things in the middle, okay? And they're held together by hydrogen bonds, all right? That's what these are held together by, right? The nitrogenous base is held together by these hydrogen bonds, and it's represented by that. So you can see on A's and T's, okay, up here, it says hydrogen bond is represented by these little circles. A's and T's have two hydrogen bonds, Okay, that connect them. Sometimes they might be represented by lines. So if you saw two lines in between these um, bases, you would know that that's a bond between A and T. A's and T's always have two hydrogen bonds. Here, you've got three dots, three hydrogen bonds. Okay, so G's and C's are held together by three hydrogen bonds. You may need to know that for an exam. So now would be a good time to pause and take a snippet. You don't need the whole thing, but maybe just this top part. And I would say that you make sure that you know that these little circles are hydrogen bonds and that A and T, adenine and thymine, always have two hydrogen bonds that hold them together. And G and C, guanine and cytosine, always have three hydrogen bonds that hold each other together. All right, so the base pair rule, again, is that A's go with T's and G's go with C's. So what I want you to do right now is go, okay, if this is my chain of one side of the DNA, okay? One side of the DNA goes A, T, A, T, C, A, T, G, C, G, G, G. What would the opposite side be? Okay, what would pair with A? And then what would pair with T? And basically what you would do is type it underneath. So whatever letter goes with A, you would type it down here. And then whatever letter goes with T, type it down here. And you do that for the whole thing. So go ahead and try that right now. And then so what you should get is the other side would be T, A, T, right? Because A's opposite is always a T because it's straight lines. T's opposite is always an A. A's opposite is always a T. And then same. And then once you get to the C, C's opposite is always the G, right? G's opposite is always the C. So you want to make sure right now that you have written down one side of DNA. So type this out in the format that you see. It comes in threes. So three letters together and then a space and then three letters, space, three letters, space, three letters. And then right underneath it, you want to type the opposites and make sure that you understand that. The base pair rule means that you have to have the same number of A's and the same number of T's, same number of G's, same number of C's, okay? It was done by this guy named Shargoff, 
okay? And he figured out that if you have a certain number of A's, then you also have the same number of T's because the base has to pair together, right? So if I have 20 A's, then I would have 20 T's. Well, what would happen if I had 52 C's? How many G's would I need? 52, right? They have to be the same. Okay, so um, you are going to need to be able to be given one side of the DNA. So if I give you one side letters like this, okay, you need to be able to understand that on the other side is going to be the opposite letter that it goes with, right? So T's, A's, G's, or C's, okay? All right, go ahead and take a snippet of this. This is just a picture showing you a kind of a really nice graphic of what DNA looks like and what each part is. So you've got the sugar phosphate backbone, right? The sides where that you would hold with your hands, that's called the backbone. Make sure you have that written down right now. The sides of the ladder, so when you take this snippet, put it in, and then right off to the side. The sides of the ladder, which are these blue and um, orange sugars and phosphates, the sides are called the backbone. You need to know that, okay? It's the backbone, even right here on the sides. And then the nitrogenous bases, okay, in the middle, those are the rungs of the ladder. You need to know that for your exam. And then one whole little unit here, one phosphate, one sugar, one nitrogenous base is called a nucleotide. This is on your exam too. There will be something that identifies one of these, and you need to be able to say that's a nucleotide. All right, how the code works. Basically, you put A, T, Gs, and Cs together, and then that determines what traits that you have. So let's say if you put C, A, T, C, A, T together, that would give you purple hair. And then if you put the, it backwards, T, A, C, T, A, C, that may code for yellow hair. So certain combinations of nitrogenous bases code for different proteins, different things, different traits. All right. So you want to think of the bases like letters. Letters form words, and words form sentences, and you could put endless combinations together. This is how we all have only four bases, A, T, G, and C. We have those four. But you do not look identical to me, even though you have the same four bases that I have. Any combination that you put them in is going to come up with an infinite possibility of hair color, eye color, height, anything like that, right? You can put it together in so many different ways, and it comes up with so many different traits, okay? That's how DNA works with the letters. All right, to replicate DNA, this is DNA replication. This is important. It's the process by which DNA makes a copy of itself. So we have to do this in the S phase, if you remember the cell cycle. In um, the S phase is DNA synthesis, and that's where we're going to replicate the DNA to get ready for the cell to divide, because if we don't replicate it, then you have only half the DNA for each cell, and that's not going to work, okay? So it's semi-conservative. You need to write this down for sure. Semi-conservative means that the old strand is two pieces. It's going to split in half, and then you're going to replicate one strand of on each side. So semi-conservative means that you're going to keep one of half of the old strand, half of the double helix, and you're going to add a new one to that. And then the other half of the double helix, it will get replicated. So semi-conservative means that you are keeping a piece of the original strand and then you're copying it, making it new. So the process is that you have um, the old strand of DNA. So this ladder right here, this is the old strand, gets split in half. Those nitrogen spaces get unzipped, okay? They get unzipped by an enzyme through here and they get separated. And once they're separated, you have half on this side of the old strand and half on this side of the other strand. And what happens is another enzyme comes in and adds the complementary bases. So if this was an A right here, it would put this green T. If this was a T, it would put a green A and all the way up until it's copied and it now has the same exact format as the old strand did, but only has part of it. And then you get this other strand. All right. So that's what you really want to make sure you know. Go ahead and take a snippet of this here, of this DNA replication picture. We'll go more in depth with that when we get into um, protein synthesis. But what you need to know is that you have an old strand. It gets unzipped, separates apart, and then you're going to add the complementary bases, A's with T's and G's with C's. 
okay, until you have copied that strand. And now you have half an old strand and half a new strand. All right, and that's it on DNA structure and replication. Make sure you go back, really practice base pairing. A's have straight lines and go with T's that have straight lines. C's have curved lines that go with G's with curved lines, and you will be totally great. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.